When St. Francis of Sales was about 17 years of age, he was residing in Paris, where he was pursuing his studies. At the same time, he devoted himself to exercises of piety and to the holy love of God, in which he found the joys of paradise. Our Lord, in order to try him and to strengthen the bands which united him to himself, allowed the evil spirit to persuade him that all he did was in vain, as he was already condemned in the eternal decrees of God. The darkness and spiritual dryness in which God was pleased at the same time to leave him caused the temptation to have a greater power over the heart of the holy youth, and indeed it reached such a pitch that his fears and interior desolation took away his appetite, deprived him of sleep, made him pale and melancholy, so much so that he excited the compassion of all who saw him. As long as this terrible storm lasted, the saint could only conceive thoughts and utter words of despondency and bitter grief. Then said he, I am to be deprived of the grace of my God, who hitherto has shown himself so lovely and sweet to me. O love, O beauty, to which I have consecrated all my affections, I am no longer to enjoy thy consolation. O virgin mother of God, the fairest amongst all the daughters of Jerusalem, then am I never to see thee in heaven. Ah, lady, if I am not to behold thy beautiful countenance in paradise, at least permit me not to blaspheme thee in hell. Such were the tender sentiments of that afflicted, but at the same time loving heart. The temptation had lasted a month when it pleased our Lord to deliver him by the means of that comfortress of the world, the most blessed Mary, to whom the saint had some time before consecrated his virginity, and in whom, as he declared, he had placed all his hopes. One evening on returning home he entered a church and saw a tablet hanging to the wall. He read it and found the following well-known prayer commonly called of St. Bernard, Remember, O most pious Virgin Mary, that it never has been heard of in any age that anyone having recourse to thy protection was abandoned. Falling on his knees before the altar of the Divine Mother, he recited this prayer with tender fervor, renewed his vow of chastity, promised to say the rosary every day, and then added, My Queen, be my advocate with thy son, whom I dare not approach. My Mother, if I am so unfortunate as not to be able to love my Lord in the next world, and whom I know to be so worthy of love, at least do thou obtain that I may love him in this world as much as possible. This is the grace that I ask and hope for from thee. Having thus addressed the Blessed Virgin, he cast himself into the arms of divine mercy and resigned himself entirely to the will of God. Scarcely had he finished his prayer when in an instant he was delivered from his temptation by his most sweet mother. He immediately regained the peace of his soul and with it his bodily health, and from that time forward lived most devout to Mary whose praises and mercy he constantly extolled, both in his sermons and writings and during the remainder of his life.